Chapter 4, Step 3. Now it's time for some consequences. In Step 1, you gather data. In Step 2, you are forced into making a decision. And that decision will determine how easy or how difficult Step 3 is. Now, if you want Step 3 to be an absolute nightmare and for you to have stress, heartache, and a rubbish outcome, poor grades, and terrible time of it, ensure that you've got virtually no clue as to who your market segment is. The less you understand about your segment, the harder you can make Step 3, and that will just bring you misery and suffering. Which is entirely why I don't like leaving people in that situation where they don't understand who their audience is or know their market segment. Because it's no fun. It's no fun for you, it doesn't do much for me, and everyone has a bad day. So, if you haven't honestly made those hard calls in step two, go back there now. If you have, cross check. Otherwise, let's get this underway. Step three is, I've got a plan, I've got an idea, I've got some evidence, I've got some plans, I've got some tactical planning, I've got, I know what I want to do, how do we actually go about and do it? So step three is going to require you to break out the marketing mix. It's going to require you to look actually down chapter, further into the book, to specific technique, to technical levels of how do we make a product? How do we set that price? How do we phrase that communications message? So we're going to start with the big overview, the models and three different possible marketing toolkits. So you're familiar with the marketing mix, price, product, promotion, place. Given the internet is mostly a service we're going to open with the, we're going to bring the services marketing model into play. People, physical evidence and processes. And just a quick shout out on physical evidence, that's also inclusive of virtual evidence. What is your website or your application or your social media? What does it look like? As well as what is your physical manifestation? If you're a drop shipping company that only operates as a website and mails things out to people, what does the box that you ship things in look like? Is it branded? Is it unbranded? White label versus co-branded? How does the physical evidence contribute to your segment's understanding of who you are and the value they're getting from you? So the mix is a classic. You should be familiar with it. We're going to go into it further. But you want to start now thinking in terms for each and every element of what you're doing on the internet for every blog post you make, for every tweet you make, every Instagram photo you post. What does it cost someone to engage with this content? What is the value from this content? How do they know about it? Where are they accessing it? Who are they? What's the interplay? What's the communication? What's the interpersonal? What does this do in terms of building evidence towards my brand, myself, my personality, my persona? And how does this whole thing come together? What are the processes? What are the protocols? Again, early days, it will be a conscious decision. The more practice you do, the more you practice this, the more you participate, making these posts, writing the tweets, taking the Instagram photos, the more it becomes just a seamless part of the process. Take, create, appreciate what the audience needs from this, deliver. Your second marketing mix I want to draw your attention to is my uh, personal... Uh, I have a real love of this particular mix. I'm about the only person on the planet who's really endorsing it other than the original creators. The Def and Schultz 2005 Siva mix gives you a way of viewing an offering from the customer side. And it's worth doing this for the e-marketing approach because then you can go and say, well, question goes from what do I create? What controls do I put to what does the consumer get? What's the solution? 
Someone is scrolling through Instagram, what is it that they're seeking as they're going through Instagram? What is it they're looking for? What, what can you offer them that meets that need? Information, where are they going to learn about it? Where are they going to see about it? The information that comes from you and the product you provide and comes from yourself, but it's the information that they draw from other places. The value, what does it cost them in return for what they're getting back in their solution? And the accessibility, this is the one that Siva brings to the fore. It's one of its strongest ideas is, with the product that you have offered, and tweet, image, blog post, video, product, app, physical good, service, idea, whatever it is, can the end user unpack it and use it? Can the accessibility element of, if you take a, a wonderfully artistic photo that's terribly expressive of what you want to, of how you feel, is the person who's going to pick up that phone in a few days' time and look at that photo going to be able to access the meaning you intended? That's accessibility. Can you encode something that the end user can decode the way that you were hoping? Now, the other element to this is that in the AMA definition of marketing, marketing is a pro it's an activity. You create, you communicate, you deliver, you exchange. So this gives you an opportunity to think that mantra through as what am I doing? And when I'm doing my stuff, when I'm engaging with the internet and I'm engaging with my audience over the internet, am I meeting these, am I answering these questions? Do I, can I actually step back and go, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing? So, Basically, what you need to do with your plan at this point is you've got your objective, you've got your smart objectives, you've brought them down to an audience. Here, you want to start talking about how you're going to use elements of the mix to deliver. Because the critical thing is, what you're going to do next is you're actually going to deliver. And it's that delivery, that the better you you're better understanding the more you've thought through, documented, drafted and redrafted the lead up support material, the easier it is to get out there and do, get out there and implement. So step four in the process here is objectives, two goals, two metrics. So basically, the question you need to be able to answer is, how do you know if you've achieved your objectives? Now, on a smart metric, on a smart objective, it's measurable. So what you need to be able to do in your metric is show what measurement you've used to, show, to be able to tick a box that says this objective was achieved. You've got a timetable. A smart objective has a timetable. You know when it needs to be achieved. So you need to be able to say what your measurement was, when would it be achieved by, was it achieved? So you, this is what you will be doing at the end of semester, but you also want to be able to do this on the way. If you've got weekly goals and to-do lists and you've got unticked boxes, you know something's going wrong early enough to be able to make a course correction. You want to be trialing, you want to be testing, and you want to be doing the science approach of A test, the A-B splits. You want to basically be ensuring that you know whether you're on track or off track. So this is the critical part, the metrics. The metrics get brought up again later in the chapters and in the course. But you want to be able to say at this point, how will I know I've achieved my plan? So this is where you need to pull together some content material. We have reports and documentation to support that. And that is one of the things that the book does come bundled with is a bunch of ways of codifying the decisions you've made so you can act on them. As always, any questions, any materials you want revamped, come back and ask me. But this is a critical one of, now you've made your decisions, and now you've got your consequences, document what you're gonna do so you can go out and do it.